What's up guys, welcome to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at Soundhound AI stock, ticker symbol S-O-U-N, on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day. Tuesday, April 2nd. Alright guys, Soundhound stock here today down 33 cents a share, minus 5.6% essentially flat in the after hours but as always take that with a grain of salt because we are seeing low volume in the after hours let's take a look and try to pull out as much bias as we possibly can here to get a little bit more insight more than just the price action out of sound hound from today's session using the volume profile the psychological levels the technical levels the areas that i think we'll see elevated trading decision decision making going on the options bias directional bias and finally the expected move Let's jump in. Listen, if you are new here, please take a second, subscribe to the channel. It helps out tremendously, and I greatly appreciate it. Let's take a look here. Moves that I'm primarily interested in for the volume profile on Soundhound here today. This volatility off the open, this kind of like fade, recovery, pop, and then fade that we saw off the open. And you know what? I suppose we'll take a look at this accelerating fade into the close. That's really about it here on Soundhound today. Let's take a look. We see this contextual high volume open that's not out of the ordinary. In terms of bias here, we're seeing a, a pretty mixed bag, little poppy candles, nothing consecutive though. We're not seeing, you know, four or five consecutive green bars or red bars. To me, when we peek under the hood and take, take a layer of the onion away, there's really no bias off the open because this is contextual, that first bar, that's very normal. And then we see that quick fade and it's just so, such a mixed bag that there's really nothing to pull out of that open, which is interesting. If you're a bear, you're kind of hoping for some heavy bearish bias on that fade that we saw off the open. It's really not there, though. Now, in terms of this move, that acceleration to the downside that we got later in the day, we saw a couple of out-of-context bars here. We saw a couple here into the close. Into the close is a little bit more expected, all right? But, you know, yeah, I mean... I prefer really three or four consecutive bars, but there is a slight bearish bias here. And then maybe you could argue into the close. It's a little higher than what might be typical. Sure. We're going to get more variation on a stock like Soundhound because the volume is, is lower than compared to other names. Smaller sample size leaves a little bit more room for, you know, perhaps some some different events day to day, we'll say. It, it's, it's less smooth than a stock like or an ETF, I suppose, like SPY, right? But certainly a very small amount of bearish bias on these two consecutive out-of-context bars. But again, the reason I say a very small amount is because I, I typically prefer to see at least three or four consecutive bars to really start looking at an obvious bias. All right, now let's move on here. Let's take a look at the self-fulfilling prophecy psychological levels that I'm paying close attention to come Tuesday, tomorrow. All right, now, back on Wednesday of last week, we reclaimed the 50 period. Heading into the weekend, we just barely gave it up. But remember, we, we were looking ahead to this week and talking about how, you know, this thing really hasn't been given up or, or held yet. It was really up to today to help decide. We're getting a steadily descending 200 period. And now today, this flat 50 period has turned into a slight descending 50 period as we tested it off the open and rejected we have now given up that 50 period here on the 30 minute chart. I would say a little bit more officially. Okay. Listen, the 30 minute chart is the most forgiving in terms of reclaims if you're a bear and give ups if you're a bull, but it's there and it's worth considering. So now moving forward, bears, you guys want to see both of these moving averages accelerating downside as quickly as possible, adding a, a lower psychological barrier as low as possible, dragging the stock price down, causing problems getting back upside psychological problems right the lower those go as long as the stock is beneath them the better if you're a bear now listen bulls honestly in this case we're looking at about a six and a half percent move to reclaim both of those probably about a seven percent move really to reclaim both of those so you know it depends where you stand if you think the stock can get enough strength to blast through back upside through both of those if they continue downside well then you might want to see both of those lower just to get it out of the way quicker okay but if you think this stock needs a little bit of heat taken off of it you want both of those moving averages here on the 30 minute to stay as high as possible as long as possible which means flattening out here worth considering 
We're now seeing the 200 period get below $6 a share, which could add a slight psychological barrier into the mix in terms of getting Soundhound back above 6 bucks a share. Or just be aware of that. Now, here on the 4-hour, we're still in between this pretty wide channel, getting a little closer to that 200 period on the 4-hour as it moves higher. All right, bears. We're currently about 7, almost 8% away from testing that 200 period. So listen, it's still a big move away. It looks a little closer, but it's still a big move away. Bulls were even further. Okay, we are 21% away from testing that 50 period to the upside. So listen, the four hour chart for me is a watch. I'm simply paying attention to this. We've seen a lot of sideways movement the last week or so out of Soundhound. I'm paying attention. Ideally, Bulls, that 200 period continues to come upside. A change that we're seeing is it is, you know, getting deeper into or above more so $5 territory here today, which is good. It's another psychological barrier to help protect from $5, which bears are salivating, thinking of giving up $5 a share. Just understand that. So I'm certainly not ignoring the four hour. I'm watching, but, you know, let's be real. Let's just keep it simple. It's not really immediately in play, but I like to see that 200 period reclaiming five or, or more so just getting above five and putting some distance in between the 200 and five as an added psychological barrier to maybe help protect the bulls. Okay, bears, if we give that up, though, that's a good sign for you. Now, the daily. This is the big story. Okay? Listen, the story here has been $6 a share. We now find ourselves, as of, you know, right now, about 7.5%, 7.8% away from $6 a share. Um, the bears won $6 a share just in the last, like, day or two. In the very short term, the bears have kind of won that battle of six. Okay, that's just the truth. That doesn't mean it's over. It's a battle, not the war. All right? Bears. Six is still your enemy. Your goal now is 550. When you have a stock in the $5 range, every 50 cents is a big psychological level. We've seen 550 hold us support a number of times in the past. Bears, your new goal is to crack 550 to the downside, and in doing so, you know, I don't mean for six minutes either. I mean a crack downside and a hold, ideally with a retest and a hold on high volume rejecting off 550. That, open you, that opens you guys up for a huge test of five, which is, I think, a lot of you bears, that's kind of your ultimate goal is to crack five, right? Bulls, I want to see 550 hold here, ideally with a big volume bounce. That opens up a retest of six and gives us another chance for a crack at six, getting above and actually holding six for a number of days, which we really struggled with all last week. Okay, that's really the big story here on the daily. A couple more things, though. The expected move. The next expiration we have on SoundHound is this Friday at the close. The expected volatility by then is plus or minus 57 cents per share. Remember, the, the expected move itself doesn't have a volatility bias. It's the, it's the, sorry, it doesn't have a directional bias. That is the volatility bias out of the market, which is kind of like the missing piece of that puzzle, whereas the analysis and then the options bias is where we get directional bias from or where we form that on our own. So if you take that number by Friday's close, right, we have four trading days between now and then, and you divide that by four because there's no outsized day, no earnings or anything, that gives us about 14 cents plus or minus per day. But that ex you know, that's really assuming a green streak or a red streak. What I like to do is add about 50% to that to account for a, a mix of green and red days. And that kind of gives us a market expectation of plus or minus 21 cents per day out of SoundHound. Okay. I mean, we're talking, you know, we're not talking half percent moves each day. That's a relatively sizable expectation out of the market, but listen, we've seen much crazier things out of SoundHound just recently than a few percent per day. But you have to also be realistic with yourself and understand, okay, what's my volatility expectation coupled with my directional bias, and then do I think the volatility is going to exceed the market's expectation? Okay, if you don't think so, then buying options perhaps isn't in you know, maybe you think about that's not in your best interest if you don't think that realized volatility is going to exceed expected volatility. If you do think that, then, you know, maybe you're in that boat. Now, the last thing we can take a look at is the bias out of the chain. 
What did we get here today? Vol volume's a little low, so take this with a grain of salt. 45,000 total contracts traded. 35,000 of those today were calls. And 10,000, just under 10,000 were puts today. Heavy call side bias on the overall ratio. The short-term speculators, the short-term most aggressive bets out of the money being placed. 10,100 calls here today, 2,800 puts. Volume is low, take it with a grain of salt, but also a heavy call side bias out of the short-term speculators here on Monday. Listen, if you get value out of these videos, please, helps out tremendously if you subscribe to the channel. Also, someone you care about, a friend, family member, owns SoundHound or is looking to get involved. If you think they'll find some value in this video, send them the video. Greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.